Yeah, I will just hold the mic in my hand. It's probably easier. So um, thanks everybody for showing up. Um, I'm happy that you are here. Uh, I'm. I was a bit concerned about the scheduling because we have the Mindshare session in parallel to this one. So people interested about the future or uh, about what to improve in Fedora are probably in that session, uh, while others might think um, this session is only about the past, about my decade in Fedora, while in fact it is not. Um, I'm going to tell you something about the lessons I learned and the mistakes or the mistakes I made and the lessons I learned from that and also uh, the lessons or the, the mistakes Red Hat or the, the Fedora uh, governance bodies, various bodies or various people made and also the lessons we learned from that. In order to not repeat the his mistakes of the past, um, so I think this talk would have been an excellent opener for the Mindshare session. Unfortunately, they're scheduled in parallel. We'll do that better next year. Well, that's <laughs> not my problem then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just play the video. Yes, so this will probably be my last talk on a Fedora, well, not on a Fedora conference. I hope to be back every now and then. As just as I will be around in the greater open source community, but it will probably be my last talk with my Fedora hat on. Yesterday I gave a talk about technical writing. This was with my SUSE hat on or with my SUSE shirt on. <laughs> While today I'm wearing the Fatcon Berlin shirt that's from 2009. That is the first Fatcon I attended, and that's the oldest Fatcon shirt. I have. So, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we are talking about what I did for Infidora, the mistakes I made and the lessons I learned, various ways how to upset the community, and at the end we are going to have some fun time. I selected a couple of photos. Unfortunately, um, um, LibreOffice is very bad in scaling photos, so I didn't put the photos into the slides. Um, so we will just see them at the, at the end, in no particular order, but more or less random, not chronologically or something, what you might expect. Uh, I apologize that this talk won't have a consistent plot. I recently attended a storytelling training and presentation training, and they say it's all about the plot. Um, but this talk will rather be a collection of anecdotes and, and yeah, nice or not so nice stories. So don't expect too much of a red line, but hopefully in the end it will make some sense. So first of all, why did I join Fedora? I have been, as a student, so I originally come from a totally different background, um, from a so I studied uh, linguistics, German ling uh, linguistics, German literature, political science, and history. So I got into Linux when I was working at a local ISP as a student. Somebody introduced me in, uh, to Linux. Um, I bought my first copy of SUSE Linux 6.1, I think. And a week later, my flatmate by the time came around the corner with the Red Hat 6.1. Point o, which at that time was still a boxed product that you could buy at the supermarket, which seems very <laughs> weird these days, right? <laughs> then I quickly switched, uh, or I bounced back and forth between uh, Sudha and Red Hat, then I got into Debian, that's where I learned a lot of stuff, while Sousa and Red Hat worked pretty much out of the box, in Debian nothing did. That's why I had the steep learning curve, but it also helped me. Uh, I used Debian for quite a while until Woody was so outdated that it was hardly usable and they didn't have a new release. Actually, I wanted to join Debian. I was in the queue to become a Debian maintainer, but they had pretty much of a problem because the previous... I'm not sure if you're familiar with how Debian maintainers are... Uh, how they become maintainers or developers. You need to know at least X other developers. You need to 
have your GPG keys signed by their keys and so on. The problem at that time was the person who was in charge of all the German Debian developers uh, got into a fight with the rest of the Debian community. He left and he took all the keys and everything with him. So they couldn't accept any new Debian developers for over a year, I think. And then Red Hat announced they would go, uh, they would make Fedora a community project. And I immediately switched back. I think it was by Fedora Core 1, Beta 1, or something. And uh, yeah, that's when I also started contributing. Uh, I think my first contribution was a bug report about anaconda crashing when you make an accidental triple click somewhere. I'm not sure <laughs> how, how I found that out, but yeah, that was my first ever contribution. Um, I started building packages, mainly XFCE packages. At some point on the mailing list, I asked um, for a nice front end. I had a repository of my own. And uh, I asked somebody, uh, I know about create repo, but by the time there was no repo view yet, there was some weird Perl thing, I don't know who yeah, it was. Yeah, it was written by Constantine as well, it was the predecessor to repo view. Yeah. And so I was writing how to get a nice, uh, I was writing an email to the mailing list how to get a nice uh, web, view, web interface for the package collection. And Torsten Lehmus, you probably know him, responded and said, well, you can use this, uh, but why not join Fedora? Just upload the packages to our servers and we take care of everything. So Torsten sponsored me, which I'm very grateful for. And um, yeah, that's when I joined Fedora. That was in September 2005, I joined as a packager. I quickly became a packager sponsor uh, in yeah, a little over a year. And uh, in April 2007, I became a Fedora ambassador. We didn't have a real process for Actually, I became the Fedora ambassador for my state because I was the only Fedora ambassador in North Rhine-Westphalia by that time. Um, yeah, that's when I started going to, going to events and that's where I would argue that that's when my career started because it's all about the people go out and meet people, uh, make friends, uh, do some networking if you want to achieve something in the community, but more on that later. In 2010, I got elected into FESCO. A year later, I got elected into the board. And at the same time, I also became the FAMSCO chair, or the first member, and I think in the second year, the chair, I've been serving on FAMSCO for I don't know how long, I, that's why there's no end date. I think it was like three years, four years in a row. In 2014, I became a board member again, but this time not elected, but appointed. The, I was the community or outreach representative, and uh, I remained in this role uh, when we switched from the board to the council. Uh, but say a year later, I, uh, that must have been in 2014 or 2015, I stepped down from the role because I could no longer do it. Um, so what have I done or what roles did I have apart from these official titles? I was in the XFCE SIG. Uh, Kevin and I were maintaining most of the XFCE stack. Uh, traditionally, he did XFCE core while I was doing the uh, XFCE goodies. I was the member or founder of the Alex DE SIG, uh, which was, well, the Alex DE SIG never really existed. It was just uh, making uh, FESCO believe it does in order to get my feature <laughs> approved. Um, I was a member of the SPIN SIG, of the medical SIG. I was the SPINS Wrangler. I still am, even though there is no SPINS Wrangler anymore. I was the, I, I still get mails every now and then about that. We should probably update this in the wiki. Uh, I was the EMEA media wrangler, means I was in charge of media production for the EMEA uh, region. Uh, I had like, yeah, I will show you a picture later. And I was also in charge of the swag production. I produced uh, the, the blue ambassadors. No, there's no ambassador around here. I produced the blue ambassadors shirt for not only for Europe, but because they were so good quality and it was actually cheaper 
uh, to ship them, it, it, it's a bit weird. We shipped them to Asia, they were probably produced in Asia, and we shipped them back, but that was cheaper <laughs> than for them buying them there. So basically I took care of the global uh, ambassador shirt distribution and other swag. Yeah, I did a couple of features, as I said, I uh, brought LXDE into Fedora. By the way, who is the, is the program manager? No, he's not here with us. Oh, uh, you mailed me about the LXDE spin? Yes. Please kill it. <laughs> Go die burning in a fire. It's, uh, no, LXDE upstream is dead, or more or less dead. There's a Qt-based variant of LXDE, which is called LXQt. There's a different spin, but the GTK version is dead, and please orphan the spin. I have no resources to test it, please. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Or, well, unless somebody is, is, is willing to maintain it, but it's, if it's dead upstream, uh, it's no use. Okay, then Kevin and I did XFCE 4.6 and 4.8 later, and I think we even did 4.10 and 4.12 together. I'm not sure if there were not fe no features, but at some point I just stopped counting. <laughs> uh, together with Gerd Pokora, I did Rakudo. We, we packaged Rakudo uh, Pro 6 and later Rakudo Star, its successor. Together with uh, Jörg Simon, I worked on the security spin. We had the multi desktop DVD together with Spot. Yeah, and um, the question is now why did I eventually leave Fedora? Well, on the one hand, uh, life, uh, well, let's start with the simple solution, or the, the obvious answer. I joined SUSE a little over two years ago. My initial idea was continue with Fedora as a hobby and work on SUSE in a day job. Uh, but that didn't quite work out. And actually I should have known that from the start because when I was in Fedora, I always was a, a very strong advocate of the community, and I was really angry at Red Hertas who don't care about Fedora or who don't care about the community, but just about their day job. Having this, yeah, split brain situation, day job versus uh, versus community. So I was angry at them, and I wanted to do the same, which was a really bad idea. So. Um, I don't, at the moment, I'm not really in the OpenSUSE community. I probably will take over some packages, for example, XFCE, because I know we could do better, they could be in better shape, we could do awesome patches like we had in Fedora and so on. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I don't have any intentions to become a member of the, the OpenSUSE board or whatnot. Uh, for me, it feels like I've, I've like a game, I've done all the levels, I, I <laughs> made it to the final boss and uh, I don't want to start as a mere mortal again. So I would do my stuff and, and yeah. Win. And also I simply don't have the time any longer. Life has changed. Uh, I now have a wife, well we are not yet married but I just call her my wife and she calls, calls me her husband. And we have a little son now, he's four months old, so yeah, priorities change, life goes on, and uh, that's why I simply don't have the time. And that already leads me to the lessons I learned. Uh, oh no, so my motto throughout all these years was community first. I'm not sure if I'm, that was actually my slogan, but uh, nowadays it feels weird to say this because other people are using arbitrary combinations of word and first. I, I wouldn't say make Fedora great again or make the community great again. Uh, so yes. My advice for everybody who wants to have a career, if you will, in Fedora or in any other open source project is go out and meet people. My, I, I mean, I've been a, been a packager for two years before I first went to Linux Tag, and Linux Tag where was really when I got into the OpenSUSE community. Meeting people, um, meeting people is is not really. Um, no, if you don't meet the people, if you just communicate through mailing lists or whatnot, it's not the same. So, people are sometimes quite different on mailing lists than in real life. So. That's also a 
lesson I learned, and that's actually my next point. Uh, in 2000, when was FATCON Tempe? 2009? I think it was 2009. 2010. 11. Right, 11. Thank you. Oh, 2009 was Berlin, obviously. 2010. I, could, I can look it up, we can look it up later. 2011, 2011 was my first US FATCON. Uh, well, Berlin, Berlin FATCON doesn't really count, I would argue, because it was just a mini FATCON and it was combined with Linux Hub, well, which was a very bad idea if you want to get shit done. <laughs> because, well, you, you have a booth and you have to do booth service and on the other hand you have talks, so you're, there's this constant distraction. Our hope w was that we would get Linux tag visitors over to the FATCON, but that didn't work out. So for getting shit done, I think a uh, location like this one, not necessarily in the city center, and, and everything is closely together, so that's the best if you want to get shit done. The interesting part for me about the FATCON in Tempe was I finally got to know a lot of the American people that I only had been communicating uh, through email with. And what happened to me was that not only one, but in fact three people approached me and they pretty much told me the same story. Oh, you're Christoph Wickert? Now that we talk, you're actually a ni nice guy. <laughs> but when I read your email on the mailing list, I think you're a complete dick, and that is a quote. <laughs> um, so I learned a lot about the... Um, uh, Smooch said, my mails sound passive-aggressive. I didn't even know the word, because we don't have... Well, at least until I got to know my girlfriend. Um, but uh, usually we don't have this concept of passive-aggressive. As a German, I mean, we are active-aggressive. <laughs> we started two world wars, come on. And, uh, so we are active aggressive and I was just an active aggressive German trying to be polite and that for him sounded passive aggressive. Um, but you, you will face the same cultural differences everywhere. Um, think of, of Asians. Um, I recall an Asian uh, contributor who submitted a patch to GTK and the GTK upstream simply said, oh that is an interesting patch, where interesting can mean anything. <laughs> uh, but they just asked him, could you please uh, uh, put, slice it down into smaller chunks to address the individual problems? And I mean, that's a perfectly reasonable uh, uh, request, right? But for him, it was, he felt refused. And he never ever responded, he never ever contributed to GTK again. So, go out and meet people. Mm -hmm. It's easier, uh, but beware of the cultural differences. It's easier to, to avoid these problems or the, the problems that arouse through these cultural differences if you're meeting face to face. Be careful with email in particular or be even more careful with IRC because when you're writing emails um, you still have the option of sending it later, sleep a night over it, uh, reread what you have written. Uh, I remind you, everything you write usually shows up in some public archive of that mailing list. So everybody will be able to read it again years later. And, and when I read some of my emails from back, back of in those days, Actually, I think the guy was right, calling me a complete, yeah. The next advice for new contributors is set your pace. Um, I've shown you the roles that I had in Fedora before, and some of these roles can be very time-consuming. Uh, at some point, yeah, I was in the board and in FAMSCO. That makes, say, four hours of IRC meetings a week. But then we have the EMEA IRC meetings of the European ambassadors, which I was chairing, and I was sending out the meeting minutes and inviting people and whatnot. That add another two hours every second week, every other week. And yeah, in the end, um, I, I spent, I have no idea, at least 20 hours a week on Fedora, packed maintenance and whatnot. 
There is nothing wrong with that if you can afford it. Uh, I, at that time, could afford it, because either I was still a student or I was working uh, as a um, self-employed contractor or, or the consultant, and if I didn't have any consulting gigs, I invested time on Fedora, and actually that helped me to gather a certain reputation, which later got me various jobs, so that is time well spent, but please make sure that you don't burn out. Um, only do what you want to do, uh, as long as you can do it as a student, there's nothing wrong if you if you have holidays uh, between the semesters, you can do a little extra work or so, but don't do it in the long run. Don't do, um, yeah, don't get overworked, don't get burned out, and don't only do what you actually want to do. Don't do stuff because, only because nobody else does it. I found myself in the situation that nobody wanted to take care of this or that, and I stepped up and I did it, just because we needed somebody to do it. But uh, that's, that's not healthy, that's not sustainable in the long run. And um, if nobody else is willing to stand up and go and do it, maybe this is no longer necessary. Uh, the, if the community doesn't feel we need this or that, maybe, well, so be it. Um, of course we do need somebody to send out all the media, of course we do need somebody to take care of the uh, ambassador polos and so on, but if nobody volunteers, then you need to find a different uh, solution for that problem. Maybe Red Hat can help or, or whatever. And actually sometimes uh, stepping aside is a good opportunity. We have seen that, for example, when I, at some point I was, uh, I didn't get re-elected at, at, as FAMSCO chair. Jiri had become more active and they elected Jiri. At first I was upset, but uh, then I realized, well, he has done a better job throughout the last year and he is now doing a great job. It was a great relief for me, actually. So sometimes it's, it's good if you step aside because you give room for other contributors. Uh, they get attention, they get focus, and in the end we ultimately need new faces, new fresh blood every now and then, because life goes on, people get a family or whatever. So a healthy community should always be in the, in the uh, should always be able to replace you. If it's some stupid routine job, they will replace you with a shell script or something, <laughs> but if it's a people thing, somebody else will hopefully stand up. Then, one thing that I would like to talk about um, is um, the situation of the spins, because I've been deeply involved with that. These are two quotes from the Fedora Devel mailing list. Um, and the funny thing is, these are actually two quotes from the same person. So first they tell me, LXDE and KDE should be on the DVD. They didn't want any spins. And then they were, no, don't put it on the disc. So <laughs> as a spin maintainer, obviously, you can't do right. I know, Dennis, there, it, it wasn't you. That's, yeah. that's I can all I, I, I know it's only. Uh, you, can, you can look it up who wrote it. Uh, I can guess. Oh, excellent. Yeah. You have a brilliant memory, thank you. Um, well, he had his, he had good, uh, strong arguments for his points. Yeah. Uh, arguments that I, from my perspective as a spin maintainer, I didn't see his arguments. But for Mike's, uh, from Mike's perspective as the infrastructure guy, he did have valid points. So, but again, that's something you need to, well, I think Fedora needs to think about carefully, think about the spins, about the future of the spins, or if they are obsolete or not. That's, it's not on me to decide, it's on the Fedora community to decide. I'm pretty sure this topic will come up every now and then again. And yeah, let's see what happens with it. Then another story I would like to talk about are the Fedora objectives in 2011. That's the first time we started with, with our objectives. I think we didn't call them objectives, but we called them goals. I was very unhappy about this because I felt it was like a, a top-down approach. First, they had asked the individual groups' uh, projects, like the ambassadors and the six and whatnot, they had asked them for input. 
But when they finally came up with a list of uh, objectives, which I will show in the next slide, I felt like nothing that none of the com input from the community was in these objectives. All right, well, no, that's actually that is already the slide with these. So these were the go the objectives for 2011. Uh, these are all worthy goals. They are nice and fair, and and I can subscribe to all of them. But that doesn't mean that they are good goals, because they are way too vague. There's no immediate action that results from any of them. Uh, there's no way to measure your success, and that's I, I think that's why we now call it objectives instead of goals. The difference is you can actually measure it. Uh, you can you need to measure the impact. Um, you can never really reach your goal because you're never there. You can always improve. And also you cannot enforce stuff. Uh, when we revisited these objectives in 2012, and by that time I was on the board, we realized nothing had really changed. Because, why? Because nobody was championing them. I mean, it's easy to say, go, go make it so. I mean, if you're Captain Picard, you can tell this to Riker, but you cannot tell this to the community, right? Um, so, what the board realized, what our failure was, we tried to enforce something, but we didn't encourage or enable it, or we didn't champion it. I think nowadays the, the uh, council is doing a way better job, because the individual representatives in the council, they all represent their groups, and they drive forward their projects. And we actually have the option that, that somebody joins the council to achieve that or this or that uh, objective. So that's a way better approach. Uh, I think this is, this is something that we, Fedora as a, as a whole, as a project, has learned the lesson very well. But we can all learn from that failure because it, whatever you do, even as a single contributor, pick your favorite project and champion it. If, if you want to drive something in the ambassadors group, uh, go ahead and do it, uh, lead by example. And uh, if you're good, others will follow you, period. Okay, then the big topic of legal. Spot is not here with us, unfortunately. Um, well, yes, poor spot, that is very true. Uh, but not only poor spot, but also poor community. I thought, well, spot was between the lines. Yeah. On the one hand, you had Reddit legal, and on the other hand, you had the community. I think the, um, this, the, the time where, where this really totally escalated was also in 2011. Back in the old days, we had a, an, a European entity, we had a legal foundation, a Fedora EMEA EV, uh, with an own bank account. Uh, it was a legal entity and we were actually allowed to uh, accept donations. They were tax deductible. As I said, we had a bank account and Max, as a community leader, had um, granted us a non-exclusive or a license to use the Fedora trademark. And then in 2011, Fedora or Red Hat changed its trademark policy. And in fact, Max was never in the position to grant us any license because, I mean, he was not the owner of the trademark. We used it to produce swag with the Fedora logo on it, um, with the old Fedora logo even. Uh, but yeah, he was not allowed to do that. And actually, the German EMEA EV received some funding from Red Hat. Um, and so the thing is, we were no longer allowed to use the trademark, and uh, Red Hat had, had to cut its funding. I'm not sure if they had to or if they wanted to, if they wanted to increase the pressure on us, but it resulted in uh, that the, yeah, the, the foundation, the EMEA German, the Europe, Fedora EMEA was closed, it was founded at FOSDEM in 2009, I think, and it has to be, had to be closed down in 2011 for these legal reasons. So, if there is a way to um, upset your community, I, I think the number one is always legal stuff, because there's yeah. nothing you can do against it, uh, not even 
Matthew can, not, not even Spot can. Uh, I know back in the old days, maybe Max went into somebody's office and, and yelled at people or whatever, but that doesn't change a thing. Legal is legal, period, full stop. You cannot change the law. So, but uh, yeah, try to, try to avoid this wherever possible and in general try to avoid any red tape that is possible. So if I were to uh, give you the six key points, I think it should be between five and seven, so I went for six. Uh, I think it's always community first. It should be bottom up, not top down. Set your own pace as a contributor. Avoid red tape. I think FAMSCO was very good in creating red tape at some point. They wanted standard operating procedures for everything, which I can, okay, that's, that's <laughs> I can kind of understand that, but um, if you have everything written down, set in stone, uh, it's, it's, you're creating another hurdle. Um, yeah, lead by example, enable and don't enforce. And, uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> One thing uh, we, that, that just came to my mind, we have topics that pop up every other year again. For example, the topic of inactive ambassadors. And uh, then I, as an older ambassador, said, come on, we have beaten this topic to death. We had this already so many times. Uh, and the younger ones then come up again. So. My advice for everybody is, uh, if you're one of the old fonts like I am, make sure uh, to, to write down why you made this or that decision. It should be properly documented in the wiki, not hidden somewhere in a mail, on, on a mailing list, or not, even worse, in an IRC log. You will never be able to find this again. So make sure every decision you make is properly documented, your rationale is documented, why you made this or that decision, and for the, for the newcomers, I think, respect the elders, the structure you find, at least at some point, served a certain purpose. It, 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 there is a reason why things, they are the way they are. So show some respect to the elders, but also be willing to challenge them every now and then. If we figure out this no longer works for the community, maybe we need to rework that. So document why this decision was made, uh, but feel free to question it later. And of course, like for every, every community thing, show some, if, if you're discussing, show a minimum amount of respect for everybody. Okay, now let's quickly switch to... Nope. What is... Yeah. Last but not least, some photos. And... Um, So this is Kevin, when was it? That was not Blacksburg, that was... No, no that was Blacksburg, actually. So yeah. a talk about oh, this yeah. wouldn't be complete with a picture of Seth. I owe this man so much, or we uh, as a project owe him so much. People who follow me on Facebook or Google Plus now know that I'm a, a very vocal uh, activist for, for safe bicycle infrastructure. We are going to have a referendum in Berlin and one of these reasons is, uh, yes, that I'm a passionate cyclist just like Seth was. And in effect, we talked a lot about cycling. We exchanged private emails about this particular topic. So, yes, I don't want to lose another friend in a, in a deadly accident. So, let's all remember him. Speaking of remembering people, there's Max. I'm not sure how many people of you still remember him. And also there's a very young spot and there's a... <laughs> Come on, don't, don't tell. There's also Jörg, who is around here. I, I'm very happy. He's in the Mindshare uh, session, so I'm very happy that uh, uh, Chitlash is there. So th actually, that was uh, FOSDEM in 2008, my first FOSDEM. And I'm glad to see that people are still around. Okay, Francesco from Italy no longer is. But yeah, things, times change. Um, but uh, people, yeah, some people stick around. Here, for example, we have a very young, I think he reminds me of 
Steve, uh, of, of uh, Bill Gates, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> they got the same power. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> so that was uh, Linux talk in 2000, 2008, yes, that was my first Linux talk and I will, you will see another picture of Linux talk. Okay, that, is, uh, that was FATCON Kuala Lumpur, that was the release party we had on the last day. Because it's, uh, they have a significant amount of, of Muslims in their population. So it was a non-alcoholic release party, but if you look at these pictures, it's hard to, uh, to believe that they can have so much fun without alcohol. You know, we had a big cake fight, they had these giant fedora cakes, and it, it ended up in a, it was so hilarious, it ended up in a giant cake fight. Um, this is again back to 2008. Think of Langdon's talk, how distributions have changed. Think of how our appearance on events has changed. Uh, we have been at Linux Tag with this giant booth. You can see these individual kiosks. On every kiosk we had, so we had GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and on the very uh, right, you can see the OLPC, which was a big deal. So the, the Fedora presence at Linux Tag was, all, was exceptional. We had like 20 people there. They called us the Blue Man Group of the of the shirts, and I, I think we were the most professional team there. Nowadays, when we go to an event, we go there with a much smaller team, which is is enough to to take care of the booth service, obviously. But don't underestimate the the impact it has on community building. Even if it's expensive to bring all these people to Berlin, and even if the big booth and so on is expensive, I think that was money well spent, at least at that time. Events have changed, Fedora has changed, or the role of distribution has changed, as Langland pointed out. Um, for example, Linux Talk, which was a giant event, no longer exists. It, it ceased to exist three years ago. But it was a great time. As you can <laughs> see, right? <laughs> this was also a Linux Talk uh, at, yeah, at one night when we had drinks. I remember when, when uh, we had drinks and we got up and uh, we were already 20 meters away from the bar and then the waitress came after us and we still had 200 euros open on the bill. And yeah, I think Max just grabbed his credit card, his red hat credit card and it worked out in the end. This is a photo by Tatika. This is also Fat Contempi, 2011. Give back our distro. Who remembers this? Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I remembered it, but I didn't remember what it was about. I knew that I was, I, I have one of these buttons, in fact, I have it here, and uh, John gave, uh, gave it to me, so I was obviously on the, say, opposing side in the, op in the opposition. Um, so, well, there were some concerns about Changes, on the one hand, there was the switch to GNOME 3 with this uh, new user interface that even your grandma can use and it's no longer the hacker's desktop. And at the same time, we had certain changes in the design team and in the overall strategy, we wanted to broaden our target audience. And some people were, well, it was the Girl Scouts versus the hackers thing. Looking back, well, I, I can see their concerns, but looking back, I mean, nobody has taken our distro away. Fedora still exists, it's still a community thing. Uh, it totally wasn't worth the, the fight. Uh, and I think we should have handled it better because we lost some good people left and right. I don't think John is still active in Fedora. Nico isn't either, so these pe things will happen again in the future. No matter if it's GNOME 4 or whatever it will be, there will be conflicts and please try to, to solve them in a way that leaves nobody behind. Oh, that's another very professional photo of me from <laughs> Linux Tag and two, no, yeah, Linux Tag 2013, I think, on a great panel. My hair, <laughs> how young I was. No, but that's, that's one of the nice things I like about being a community person. So you get on stage, people get to know you. Uh, this is actually a professional photo uh, by some, some photographer from, from a magazine. Yeah. 
and another thing that I like, going to these events opens doors that you usually never open. This is at CERN, the Large Hydrogen Collider. Uh, Gerold, uh, so we had the FAT, the Federal Activity Day in Rheinfelden. Gerold was the event owner and he knows somebody working there. Normally it's, it's impossible to get there. I mean, they do guided tours, but it takes years to get a free slot. So, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for everything that, that Fedora has sh allowed me to see and do. And last but not least, <laughs> this is probably my favorite picture. <laughs> That was the, the, my all-time highlight in Fedora. I showed up with this, that was Fatcon Milan. I showed up with the, uh, I, I, so we had dinner, I disappeared and showed up with a costume again, and people totally freaked out. They carried me on their hands through the restaurant. That was incredible. Um, thank you, Fedora community, thank you. This is uh, media production. And that was only part of it. If you order 3,000 uh, DVDs, uh, make sure you're prepared for it. It's because it's more than you think. That's probably only a thousand. So the guy shows up with a lorry, and uh, please make sure you have significant storage, and, and you can actually carry this stuff. This is also one thing we shipped like 30,000 DVDs of Fedora 15, which was an achievement because I was. Also, I, I'm writing for Linux <coughs> magazine and App Mag magazine at the time. Yeah, that was really awesome. But again, it has gotten us into legal problems because they were not following the logo guidelines. As you can see, the multi-boot word mark doesn't really match the font of Fedora and, and whatnot. So, <laughs> yeah. No. It's, it's, uh, and I think they didn't sign the cover mount agreement. So again, a legal problem. Uh, at some point, well, the good thing about this is the DVDs were already out there. Fedora couldn't, or Red Hat couldn't do anything about it by the time I announced it. So, yeah, last but I think this is one of the last pictures. This is Fat in Rheinfelden. The group thing is, is uh, yeah. Getting community building, never underestimate community building and never underestimate the, the value of fun events like kart racing. <laughs> Here we have John Rose again and of course Beefy Miracle, the Wiener Mobile that was also in Fatcon Tempe. This was Fatcon Milan. I'm going to rush through these pictures, these pictures now because we are, I'm on, I think I'm already over time. No, we are done. So, um, Back again to my slides. I still have a shitload of packages. If you want some, you can have everything. Just drop me an email. Uh, I, I'm not sure if there's a procedure to mass off on them or, or well, I could just off on everything, but I, it's it's a shitload of work. There's no mass off on button. Uh, but anyway, just give me a list. I can do it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right, a behind that's it. Yeah, just look at his list of packages. Okay. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Uh, I'm very grateful for these 10, 11 years, this more than a decade, the time that I had spent in the Fedora community. Um, yeah, I think I have contributed a bit, at least to the best that I could. And yeah, I would like to thank everybody for that. <laughs>